Prince Charles and I don't have a lot in common. And even though as a child I remember strongly identifying with him, I realized pretty soon that the silver spoon in his mouth was considerably more silvery than mine. We do have one similarity though. We're both circumcised. Prince Charles and before him the sons of George V, Edward VII, later the Duke of Windsor, George VI, Henry, Duke of Gloucester, George, Duke of Kent, and Prince John were all circumcised. Now, legend has it that Queen Victoria believed that she was descended from King David and thus commanded her family to be circumcised. Now, whether this is true or not, in December 1948, Rabbi Dr. Joseph Snowman was invited to Buckingham Palace to circumcise Prince Charles. In fact, circumcision was widely performed on British middle and upper class male infants from the 1890s through the 1940s. Things have changed a bit since then. In 2010, activists against infant circumcision began an initiative to put a measure on San Francisco's November 2011 ballot that would ban all non-medically necessary circumcisions of minors. The group also published a rabidly anti-Semitic comic about a quote-unquote superhero who battles circumcisers. Hermann Rauschning, in his book Gespräch mit Hitler, published in English as Hitler Speaks, writes that Hitler said to him, conscience is a Jewish invention. Like circumcision, it mutilates man. It's interesting that Hitler linked conscience with circumcision. Conscience requires us to think about the consequences of our actions, to focus on the future and not the present. The body's interest is only the present. The place of the circumcision Brit Mila is the place from which our future flows. What the arch anti-Semite called mutilation, we call dedication.